A single idea has the potential to change healthcare forever. And the UK has an impressive tradition of innovation that has transformed healthcare. Any patient that develops a hospital acquired infection has on average nine extra days stay in hospital. And if we look at the NHS broadly, then it costs the NHS around a billion pounds a year. Based at University College Hospital in London, a nationwide research project seeks to increase aseptic practice in hospitals. Stephen Rowley leads this project. So what the ANDT project does is focus on staff behaviour in aseptic technique and it works on a premise that you will improve standards of aseptic technique by standardising practice itself. So looking at equipment issues, um, we could look at a tourniquet for example. It's well known, there's even research on, on this, that many doctors will have a cloth tourniquet which is generally not washable and they will carry that tourniquet around with them in their pocket for anything up to two years. You cannot get away from the fact that this tourniquet is microbiologically filthy. What you would see, for example, in a cannulation procedure is a doctor or a nurse doing the aseptic steps that are required in the right order, hopefully, and at the right time hand cleaning, putting on sterile or non-sterile gloves, etc. But then what you would see is the procedure totally compromised by the introduction of a filthy, dirty cloth tourniquet right at the time when the procedure needs to be aseptic, which is just before the vein gets punctured. So about seven years ago, Christian and I were medical students on the ward and we'd be sent to take blood from patients and we'd find it rather embarrassing pulling out a tourniquet from our pocket that we knew that had been used on countless numbers of patients and we thought, well this isn't good enough, there must be a solution, there must be something that's cost effective to the NHS and is single use to help infection control and certainly at the time there was nothing else available. We looked at various different materials and uh, one of the big breakthroughs we had at the beginning was deciding that we weren't going to use elasticated materials. So gradually we just peel off the top like so. Wrap it around the uh, patient's arm, into the hole, and then it's two hands, one on there, one there, and then tension, stick down. And if you don't have enough, undo again, okay. more tension, stick it down, and then you're done. Once we had a product that we could take to the hostels, we approached Chelsea Westminster about organising a trial within their phlebotomy department, and we got really good reviews from it. We loved the product from right from the beginning, um, and this was a really good motivation for us because other people liked it as well. So at this point, we, we wanted to take it forward as a proper business. Uh, so we approached one of the um, university tech transfer companies. So we started off quite naive before thinking, oh no, come up with an idea, a few months down the line, you know, sort of bish bosh bosh, we'll have, a, we'll have something there and ready to roll. But you know, it took us basically five years to achieve anything really. Certainly over the last seven years when Christian and I first started, there was nothing. And in that time, other products have come in, but they all still use the same technique and the same principles. So these are alternative single-use tourniquets. They maintain the elastic of the conventional ones. Whereas tourney strip, on the other hand, we decided that we didn't necessarily need to do that at all. Some of the disposable tourniquets are so good, if you like, you can use them repeatedly. And, and we know that staff will invariably do this. So the clear advantage to us with Tourna Strip was that once you've used it once, as much as you can recite it with one patient, after you've used it for one patient, it's, it's a spent product. Obviously any new equipment has a cost implication but you have to look at that in the context of what it costs to treat a patient with infection. You're probably looking at an extra 15 to 30,000 pounds. The thing that Chris and I have noticed is that everybody that works in hospital, regardless of what they do, have amazing ideas because they're doing the job. So I think any environment that nurtures that and encourages it is both good for the people that come up with the ideas to see their product and good for the trust that's used in it.